right, so within Schoology today, let's look at our warm-up activity. So we're going to go to the fourth one. I believe this week's theme is lab safety, correct? And we had that open-ended question yesterday where you list like the four things. So today you have a matching activity. You're to match the situation with the correct lab safety procedure. So working with fire, should I possibly tie back long hair? Yes. Yeah. Um, what about unsure of direction? Shouldn't I ask the teacher? Yes. Um, hot beaker, don't put that under cold water. What's going to happen if I do? It'll break. Yeah, it'll break. Now some glass is tempered, meaning it can, it can handle that a little better, but everything still has its boundaries and its limits. Um, starting a lab, be sure you read procedures. And working with hazardous chemicals, always wear your protective goggles. Easy breezy, right? Okay, guys, so our objective for today is to review density um, and physical and chemical change. So we're going to start to la a lab. Oh my gosh, I cannot with the words. We're going to start today in our science journal. Um, but before we, we take a couple of notes in our science journal, normally today is a rotation station day. Well, Corona, right? Mm -hmm. So I can't set up rotation stations and have y'all jumping from table to table, touching all the things. Um, it's just not within the guidelines this year. So I had to find another way to talk to you about the multiple ways that you can observe and calculate density. So I recorded a video for you guys. Hey guys, so I'm going to start talking to y'all a little bit today about a concept that you should have learned um, truly in about sixth grade, and that's the concept of density. So density is how much matter is in an object. What I'm putting on the board now where you can see on the camera, what I'm putting here, these are called density squares. Normally in a typical year I could pass these out, y'all could feel their masses, and you could personally experience um, the different densities of these, but because of the, the quarantine type guidelines for sharing of supplies, um, you're simply just going to have to kind of take my word for it. Um, I am going to show you some evidence that exemplifies this, but it's, it's really not the same as you getting to hold them. So if you have anything like this similar at home that you can get your hands on or um, talk to your parents about, see if they may have something where they could give you an example of density that you can physically touch, that would be wonderful. So what you see here are four different cubes, or not four, there's six, I can't count. Six different cubes, all made of different materials. You've got um, like an acrylic type cube, you've got a cube of wood, steel, brass, I honestly don't remember what this is, but it's gotta be some type of plastic, um, and then aluminum. And they're all exactly the same size, but when I lift these, what I experience is that some of these are quote unquote heavier than others. They have more mass. So what that means is some of these objects have fit more mass into the exact same area of space. Because if you look at these cubes, if I took their length times their width times their height of every single one of these cubes, it's, it's identical. It's the exact same volume for all of these. Um, however, they still manage to have a different mass. So what I have here You've probably seen before. Oh, when I'm making a big mess. I have a triple beam balance here. And if I put these on this triple beam balance and I took the mass of these objects, I would find that in the masses are different. So I'm going to start with this acrylic. This was the steel object. 
and I'm going to take its mass. So this is a mass of 126.6 grams. Guys, exact same volume of space, completely different masses. So when you're calculating the density of an object, you're going to take its mass, so the thing that I just measured, the triple beam balance, divided by its volume. Now these, if I wanted to, I could take a um, a ruler and measure length times width times height and get the volume of this. But there's another way to do that, and this is often the way that they test you about on the star test. Before I do that, I want to make sure that everyone understands how to use a triple beam balance. Sadly, because of the type of um, camera mount that I have, I can't show you straight on. So what you do, you're going to lay your object you're measuring on this portion. And when you do that, you're going to see that this little arrow goes way above the zero. You simply then slide your, your little weights here across, starting with the smallest to the largest, until you get your lines to line up. Once your lines here line up, then that tells you that whatever you read on these three bars is going to be the mass of that object. Um, so this would be your ones place, your hundreds place, and your tens place when reading a triple beam balance. So now, I'm going to show you this alternate way of discovering an object's volume. Um, what I have here is a graduated cylinder. And I've actually pre-filled this cylinder with a certain amount of water. It is actually 140 milliliters of water. Again, because I'm having to film from above, I can't really turn that sideways for you to see, sadly. Hoping to maybe find another, um, another recording method that will allow me to show you. Um, but you can kind of see here's the water level, and it's right between 130 and 150, so I'm right at 140 milliliters of water. So one way that you can measure the volume of um, an unknown object is to take the difference in volume when you drop it into a graduated, um, a graduated cylinder. So my initial reading was 140 milliliters, so that's without my object. And let's drop in my copper object. I'm going to put my hand over the top because this is going to splash. If we did this in class, I'd have you guys slide it in and then slowly tilt that up. Obviously, there's going to be some error here because I splashed a little. But if I look at my graduated cylinder now and I read it, I am now at 151 milliliters. So I can't subtract a bigger number from a smaller number, so I need to flip those. I need to put my larger number on top. So I would take 151 minus 140. Again, these are both measured in milliliters. I guess it's grams per cubic centimeter. <laughs> it skipped. Um, it's been a while, guys. That whole. Uh, so I took the difference of the two the two numbers. And there were tons of editing problems the day that I made this video, so I apologize in advance. Um, Six months spring break. Follow along. I think you'll get it. So in there's your units for density, grams per cubic centimeter. So again, the whole purpose of this was for me to show you that sometimes on the star test, they really use this roundabout way to calculate density, where you take the mass, you get the difference in the volume, and then from there you have to do all of your calculations. All right. So I'm going to do my math now. I've got oh, look at there. There's the math. 151 minus 140. That's going to give me a difference of 11 grams. Now, the only thing left for me to do now is to take the mass of that object, which I did earlier, and it came out to be about 146.2 um, grams. And I apologize, this isn't grams. That was milliliters. So this is my volume. Right here. 11 milliliters is my volume. 
or 46.2 grams is my mass. Density is mass over volume. An easy way to remember that is that I love density. And if I love density and I simply draw my bar through that, it's an M over a V. So now I just need to set up that division equation. So I'm going to put my uh, mass of 146.2 grams over my volume of 11 milliliters. I'm going to plug that into the calculator. 146.2 divided by 11 gives me a density of 13.29 grams per, you can be grams per milliliter, you can also say grams per cubic centimeter. So guys, that's just an overview of one of the ways that you could be asked to calculate the density of an object. That's loud. So the gist of that is almost every time I see a density question on the star test, um, they don't give you the volume, they give you the two graduated cylinders with the difference in the volume level and you have to calculate the volume. So it's important that you understand that these are multi-step and you understand that the difference in the two water levels is going to tell you via displacement the volume of that object. All right. Um, so I want, within Schoology, guys, if you go to Thursday and you find this link that says Density Lab, if everybody will click that for me, it's going to take you to a screen that looks just, just like what you see on the board. So this is an interactive um, version of what we would have done if we could have done rotation stations today. Um, I want you to be sure to turn fluid into water because that's always what we work with in class is water. And down here, if I click these objects, the names, it's going to change it. So right now, I can turn what I have into gold. So that gold, you see that it sinks to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I can turn it into wood, which is going to float. I can turn it into lead, which is going to sink. Why do some things float and some things sink? Buoyancy. Buoyancy. So in order for something to float, Compare its density to that of the water. Is it more or less? Anyone know? It's less. So if it floats on the water, that means the density of that object has to be less than that water. So I'm going to go back to iron. Um, actually, randomize. Reset. I want everybody to reset. Now, I have the cube that I started with in the beginning, and now um, I, I want to be sure that it's water again. But look, I can, I can mess with this object's mass. So I can make it have more mass. If I make it have more mass, but I don't change its volume, now that object is more dense than the water and it's going to sink. Does everyone see that? I can take my object out of the water and I can put it on the scale. It's now at 19.2 grams. So you can click and drag that object and, and weigh its mass. I'm going to drag mine back into the water. Now I'm going to I'm going to increase the volume. What do you think is going to happen when my volume goes up? It's going to start to float again. So when I increase my volume, it makes the object less dense and it's going to float in the water. Now, especially when I increase my volume and I decrease my mass. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to just play around with that. Like I said, like I'm going to take mine out. I'm going to weigh it again. Oh, I have a zero mass. Okay. I'm going to go iron. You can always reset back so you can fiddle with um, your mass and your volume again, but just play with that interactive for a couple of minutes. Wrap up with your, um, your density investigation with that interactive and head back over to Schoology. I need you to take out um, your science journals and open them to the next blank page. I'm going to lead you in some notes inside of your journal. So yesterday we glued in our Cornell notes. We're going to start writing on the following page. Um, if you want to take out several different color writing utensils, 
Remember, the more visually stimulating your notes are, evidence, scientific evidence proves that you're more likely to remember that information. Teak 6.6b, and we're going to be talking specifically about density. Um, density is measured in some pretty specific units. I write it in my journal. Be sure you write it in yours. So density is measured in grams per cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeters are equivalent to milliliters, so I could also write this as grams per milliliter. Grams are the metric unit used to measure mass and centimeters cubed or milliliters are a metric unit used to measure volume. Um, density is mass divided by volume. Yes, so if you need to move, please feel free to do some so. some math calculations required in order to calculate the density of an object. And because some of you have not yet taken algebra and you don't know how to manipulate variables, I give you what's called the density triangle. And this just helps you understand what math relationships to use based on which variable you're solving for. So there's a triangle, as you notice, I've separated it into three parts. And I know that the formula for density I know that density equals let's see if this yellow shows up. Mm, yeah, it does. Density equals mass divided by volume. Here's my mass. And here's my volume. So I've got my formula here, D equals M over V, and I've plugged those variables into this density triangle where they belong. So because mass over volume is the formula, my mass has to be up top, and my volume has to be below it. In this triangle, anything that is side by side I multiply. Anything that is above and below, I divide. So in order to use this density triangle, I simply cover the variable that I'm solving for. So in this case, if I were solving for density, I'd cover it, I'm left with mass divided by volume. If I were solving for mass, I'd cover it. I'm left with density time volume. And lastly, if I'm solving for volume, I'm left with mass divided by density. So I do want you to jot down on here that density is mass divided by volume in words so you don't forget what this means. So density is mass divided by volume. And I am changing the color of my writing utensil because just like I talked to you guys about in class, the more visually stimulating your notes are, the more likely you are to retain that content. So that's why I'm mixing up um, the colors that I'm using. So density is also defined as the amount of matter in an object. The amount of matter. So again, using this formula here, I can solve for any one of these variables by covering the one that I'm solving for. So if I cover M, I'm solving for M, I'm left with D times V. So mass equals density times volume. If I'm 
solving for volume, I cover it, I'm left with volume is mass over density. So volume equals mass divided by density. So again, using this, I can solve for any variable at any time. So you can solve for any variable at any time. Now on your STAR resources document that you're given at the end of the year with your STAR test, you have a formula sheet and this formula is on it. So you're not gonna have to remember it from memory, but there is kind of a, an easy way to do that if you ever do have to. I can just remember that I love density. So if I have the capital D for density and heart, density equals, and I just cut that heart in half. I'm now left with an M on top and a V on the bottom. So there's an easy way to help you remember that formula. But wait. Okay, we're gonna stop there for today. There are more notes, but we're gonna we're gonna do those later. We're not gonna do them right now. Um, so you can go ahead and um, set your journal aside. Put away your pens. Yes, sir. Can you go back real quick on this one? I sure can, yeah. Uh, I think. No, here. No, here. Yes. Can can I just pause it here? Is that enough for you to see it? Does that work, Bo? Yeah. Okay. There's more. Whoops. There's more. There is. There's more. <laughs> you'll you'll soon learn there's always more. Every day. Always more. more. There's more. Yep. Give me a fist to five boys. You're done? All right. Awesome. All right. So within Schoology it says quizzes review over physical and chemical changes. Um, that link there is for my at-home learners. I do also want to say at-home learners for those journal notes. You can use your digital journal and you're simply going to type those notes in versus um, writing them, them down. Now you could write them down on a piece of paper. You could take a picture of that piece of paper. You could upload it to your computer and then insert that image into your digital journal. So you can, you can find a solution to getting that in there that, that works best for you. Everyone here in class with me. I'm going to give you a code to join a live quizzes with me. Could have sworn I saved it. There it is. Uh, 20 questions. All right. So you're going to go to joinmyquiz.com and you're going to enter this game code. 583067 online learners. Um, this code is only good for live instruction. So you're going to have to click the link in Schoology to access this yourselves.
tickets. Good job. You know what to do with those, right? Okay, so you're going to put your name um, on the back of them, and they're going to go in that black box on the supply table with the sequins on the front, okay? Good job, guys. So we're back in our, our Schoology on our Bitmoji classroom, and let's go and look at our exit ticket now. If I remember correctly, we... we we didn't have a lot of time at the end of class yesterday. Yeah. Um, so I don't think y'all got to do your exit. So go ahead and do Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, ma'am. I do the answer to the Wednesday. What is your answer to the Wednesday question? So when it comes to a watermelon, the question is, when do you start at red and stop at green? Ooh. Mine isn't loading properly. Yeah, it doesn't look like mine is either. Woo. Okay, so upstream no, cannot arrow. Okay. I'll try to answer Tuesday. Oh, I'm on week three. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's refresh. Oh, sure. okay. I refreshed and it worked. I'll try that. Yeah. Mine is not. Mine's not working either. No one's working. Mine just so I, I have a possible solution to this. Hang on. Do a live one? Yep. Oh, my work. Oh, did you get it to work? Okay. Yeah. If you get it to work, do it that way. Mine's been working. If you can get in it, do it that way. Okay. This takes eight years to load. <laughs> um, found that. Yeah, but it's it's still not loaded. Oh, not found. Okay, mine. So, I guess let's do this. If yours wouldn't work, you can join Nearpod.com with, with either one of these codes, WBNKH or XZFGW, and you can try to see if you can access it that way. And you're going to do your exit for Wednesday and Thursday. It was, yeah, it was, what's the question Wednesday? And the answer was watermelon. You had to write some question that's answer was watermelon. Um, what? I thought, what's the best pair? Because that show was awesome. What's the best pair? What's the best pair? Oh, what's the best pair? The codes were either WBNKH or XZFGW. They're on the screen at the front of the room right now. Oh, I'll put it in. Wait, I'm still doing one. Yeah, All right, mine is finally working. <laughs> Tuesday won't load. Tuesday won't? Will it let you skip past it? Uh, yeah, I can skip past it, but I need to answer Tuesday. Never mind, I can't skip it. Yeah, mine's not letting me skip either. Gotta love technology, guys. Yeah, I almost doing that earlier. Okay, reload it. Well, oh, it yeah, didn't really show anything when I answered it. Yes. When I take showers, I usually bring my phone and just listen to music. Yeah. Bluetooth speaker. And I plugged my phone in last night. And my dad woke me up. He's like, Avery, your phone says your phone can't charge because there's water in it. I'm like, I use. Oh, no. So I'm here that what? And it's raining outside. So these two sheets of paper say I would like to complement blank for blank. And I gave you two on purpose. I'm just going to tell you guys, um, as you know, with all of the restrictions right now and how the things that we have to comply with, your administrators and your teachers, we are, we are struggling. So the reason that I gave you two is I want you to think about your day. And I want you to compliment one adult in your day, somebody here on campus. Um, a teacher, an administrator, <clears throat> a maintenance worker. My goodness, hang on. <clears throat> a cafeteria worker, a coach, anyone that you would like. Um, and that's going to be one of your compliments. The other one can be a student, or you can do both to an adult. That's totally your call, but I want at least one to an adult here on campus. When you are done writing your compliments, you're going to put them in the Stoli mailbox on your way out the door. I'm going to have that open for you. 
um, so that you, you guys don't all have to touch that. Normally, we'd open it like a mailbox at the post office, put our mail in and close it. I'm just going to open it up and you can drop it in on your way out of the door today so that everyone doesn't have to touch that and share their germs. For my at-home learners, I realize that you don't have access to the hard paper copies. So what I encourage you to do is to reach out to teachers via email. You can contact them through Schoology. You can contact them at your at their, their school email address, which is just their first initial, their last name at chinaspringisd.net.